Welcome to FinTech Impact. I'm your host, Jason Pereira. Today on the show, I have Matt Morris, CEO of Encore Estate Plans. Encore Estate Plans is an advisor-led tool for helping advisors to help the clients to go back. We're going to go back and do that again. Encore Estates, no sorry, Encore Estate Plans is an advisor-led tool that allows advisors to help clients develop their own estate plans and execute them all within one system. And with that, here's my interview with Matt. Matt, thanks for taking the time today. Thanks for having me, Jason. I'm excited to join you in this conversation. Oh, my pleasure. So, Matt Morris of Encore Estate Plans, tell us about Encore Estate Plans. Yeah, Encore Estate Plans is has been created to empower the trusted advisor to fix the broken estate planning client experience that exists and do it without practicing law and step into a major gap that most people have around estate planning where the current uh, options don't fit for them. Excellent. So we're going to dive into that. But before we do, let's talk about the origin of the company. How did it come to be? Yeah, so my background was a career in wealth tech with a firm called Riskalyze, now Nitrogen. I was the first... Frequent guest um, of the show? Yeah, exactly. Aaron's a great guy, great guest to have. And yeah, uh, so if he didn't tell me that he was stepping down from the freaking CEO world <laughs> last time I had him on, he like this cat, the small no, cheery look on his face. And then a couple uh, weeks later, it comes out. I'm like, dude, come on, really? Uh, yeah, you're, you're, everything you shared with me two weeks ago, <laughs> knowing mm-hmm. this was happening. Okay. Yeah, isn't that yeah. funny? The reality of uh, what you have to do sometimes. He's listening here. You know. <laughs> yeah. So funny. Yeah, that, 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 that's a hilarious piece that, yeah, sometimes you just got to do what we got to do and go present. So, yeah, that my, so that was my experience. I was the first sales hire there back in 2014 and had a blast and had a, got a PhD in wealth tech startup across the, from 2014 to 2020. And in everything we decided to do, how we went to market, all those things, and absolutely loved fintech and wealth tech. And I left and took a career sabbatical in 2020. I was just ready for to consider something new. What's next? I loved the early stage. I've always been an entrepreneur, um, having my own businesses and thought, what's next? And my time off, I looked around and saw this estate planning category. And some of my core beliefs about the industry, where it needs to go, what's best for the consumers and investors, saw really an opportunity here to step into this new offering. Big fan of what Holista Plan had done on the tax planning side Mm -hmm. and saw their success and saw why not the problem of estate planning. Really, if I give you maybe the real genesis that was in my heart that maybe I didn't know at the time that has played out was back in 2015. I was sitting at my desk at Risk Flies one afternoon. My phone starts blowing up. And I learned from my family that my aunt had just passed away at 73 years old, had an aneurysm, died suddenly. And in the days that followed, went and visited my cousins and spent time with the family. And we learned that she did not have an estate plan in place in the state of California, where my two cousins began a journey that we got to witness and support them through that they would describe now as probate hell, that they had to borrow money initially to even pull off the funeral and the services. They spent tens of thousands of dollars, hundreds and hundreds of hours becoming probate experts, trying to navigate this over the course of two years with all the challenges that comes and comes with that. And the reality is my aunt had a really simple situation. She had an advisor for years who had been saying, go get your state plan done. Go get your state plan done. Here's an attorney. I got somebody for you to do it. And she procrastinated, thought she was going to live another decade. No, no rush to get that done. And just left a disaster for her two kids to navigate. The reality is her estate plan situation, she was single. She just needed equal distributions to the kids. She could have set up a trust and it could have been executed on in a matter of months really easily. And instead, it was a nightmare for over the course of two years. And so that was an element in me that said, this is something that needs to be, there's something broken here that needs to be solved for. And this is maybe what I want to do next from a wealth tech standpoint, taking what I learned with the Riskalyze team over years, those years. Yeah, it's not an uncommon problem that it takes it takes family tragedy to basically help you understand what's going on. That said, I really want to know what the heck the problem is with California state planning. I haven't dived into it enough in probate because, frankly, it seems to be the worst state as far as I've seen when it comes to this stuff. But we'll come back to that. I do like to say 
Um, in the state of California specifically, wills are for people who hate their children because they still get the probate process. And so trust-based estate plans um, yeah, are that's what I found. the way to go in the state of California. And a handful of other states are, are like that as well. Yeah, no, that's exactly what I found. I have the clients there that they get referred to as state plans, estate lawyers, and it ends up being a trust every time. And I'm like, okay, yep. fair enough. Yep. Things make sense. Yep. And it's funny, the entire wills are for people who hate their family. <laughs> I always say, if you really want to make your heirs and the people who leave behind mad and not talk about you in a positive light after you're gone, go ahead and leave Missy a state. I, I have seen sure. so many people, unfortunately, instead of looking back with fondness on the person that's lost, Look back with resentment um, yeah. at the fact that they just couldn't get their, st their, their stuff together and left a giant headache for everybody they left behind. It, it's a very selfish thing to do, unfortunately, but it's one of these things where it also involves dealing with your mortality. So, hey, look, yeah. I'm sure everybody knows the stats. Like the vast majority, the majority of people do not have enough data, they do not have a will, first of all. And yeah. the majority of those probably haven't looked at it in over three years. So it's probably not even great. So talk to me about how you decided to approach solving this problem. Yeah, the real core belief came from my belief and trust in the value that financial advisors provide. And that was from my years of experience of doing well tech and recognizing there needs to be a human. We have had uh, software that allows anybody to DIY their own estate plan for geez, now over 20 years. Okay. Google Zoom was out there. Yet we sit here with 67% of Americans, at least, I don't know the numbers in Canada, without an estate plan. And so, Pretty close to that, yeah, or okay. at least the rele relevant one, yeah. Yeah, the, and anybody can go and do it. It's right there. The software is sitting there. Go get it done. It's not getting done. Software is not solving this gap. And if we begin to think about all the, to your point, the estate plans that are out of date, that are also a disaster waiting to happen because nobody exists that's reviewing decisions that people made years ago and saying, is this still what you would want? Is this relevant? Is this up to date? And so those two problems that there's working with the, the attorney driven process and the software only, the reality is people, I think, know that they don't know what they don't know. <laughs> and there's this hesitancy, obviously, to deal with our, our own mortality, but to run through a software and put all my inputs in. And for that software just to spit out a document is, uh, there's a lot of people who are still uncomfortable with that. Is this really going to accomplish what I want? I just answered these questions and here's my document. And there's also potential issues, and this exists in all software that just spits out a document that there's real potential issues on garbage in is garbage out. Here's your document, you sign it. What if I didn't make a decision there? And so the core belief in Encore is that the advisor is the hero by being that trusted human that can step into this process. And instead of delegating it out and saying, hey, client, here's a piece of software, go for it. And that they should step in and be a part of the collaboration. And the benefit is tremendous to the client because now they have that human that already understands, they've already talked to about death. Mm -hmm. They've already talked to about legacy. The human who already has context for my life, knows my family dynamic, knows my account situation, knows, has that element. And if that person can step in and facilitate my experience in the software with me, I feel way better about doing it. And it's also that person that I trust to grab me by the collar and say, you've been putting this off year after year. I've sent you to this attorney <laughs> how many times now and you haven't done it? Guess what? Next meeting, we're going to sit down for 30 minutes or so. I'm going to take you through a questionnaire. You're going to answer these questions. We're going to get you this document that you des desperately needed. Yeah, I have to say estate planning combines two things no one likes, administration and death. So mm -hmm. is it any surprise that people don't want to do it? Yeah, and, yeah you're right. And your point back to the software is not solving the problem. Yeah. It absolutely is not. Just because it's possible doesn't mean people are going to do it because you still got to get over the entire... No one wakes up and says, today's my day to make a will. That's yeah. not a thing. And yeah. it also comes down to filling out... What I really get concerned about is trying to score, uh, square, like force a square peg into a round hole. A lot of cases yeah. really should not be handled by these online simple legal will kits because frankly, there's something not captured in the questionnaire or their lives that could not be, that might be missed and can lead to a bigger headache than if there had been in the world. So it's a tricky one. And that's exactly, that's a perfect point. And it, it, the advisor is well-equipped 
to recognize when software is appropriate. And we actually do this with them and we help them in this. And when that person should work with an attorney. We are, at Encore, we recognize we're not a fit for everybody. We are, are built to serve the mass affluent. The folks like my aunt who had seven figures worth of assets, but had a very straightforward estate planning need that all she really needed, all they needed are just some education to get over yep. a little bit of the hurdles of better understanding this, that I might get stuck if I DIY my own software, the advisor sent me the link and I just go in and jump in, I'm going to get stuck on this question. But when the advisor can facilitate, here's how to think about this. I can't give you legal advice. I'm not an attorney. And that's well disclosed with our advisors who work with their clients here, but they can provide the education that gets the client through those hurdles and then recognizes that, hey, your situation is not appropriate for an online software, I have an attorney for you, or I can leverage, yep. leverage attorney through my network with Encore to help you. And so we have those disqualifying questions in our system. Oh, but the says, issue is that you also have the human being there because oftentimes people will just yes. be like, I want to put up with that. And I, I, I worry about them trying to fit, just say, what, what if I just change it and try to basically go around that disqualifier? So having someone say, this disqualifier is a very valid point. You need to keep yep. doing this is, yep. is far better than just, them just trying to get it done. Exactly, exactly. So this is the, again, in all of this points, the real value, what's really important to us at Encore is that at the end of both in getting doc, new documents created and in possibly renew, reviewing old documents is we want the client to look to the advisor and say, thank you. You helped me in this experience. I, I have the peace of mind now that I've been knowing this has been bugging me in the back of my mind for years. I, every day, it was never the day to your point of, I'm going to actually do it today, but you finally grabbed me by the arm and you got me to this place that I know my family will be okay beyond my life that these things are taken care of. And that peace of mind that comes with it, we want the advisor. We think the advisor is the hero, not us, but we're here to say, how can we build everything in our experience that enables the advisor to step into the gap, get credit for it. And I'll also do that without practicing law, which is important. Which is important, which we come back to in a second. But the, yeah, and I, again, as I like to say, one of the primary functions of an advisor is the nagging. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> you're exactly. nagging, checking the totally. box, like, making sure they totally. do it. So, and putting it's, it on, it's just another thing to nag about. And it's, but being able to sit them, I think it's something much more powerful to say, okay, no more excuses. We're sitting here today. I'm just going to open up my screen and we're going to go to this together. I think that is far more powerful than telling them to go deal with a lawyer. Uh, absolutely. Yep. And they, and the client recognizes they knew that. We all know that we need that. And it's one of those things that same with my financial plan, all those things that I know I should do. I don't need to do a financial plan today either, but my advisor helped me through that. They made what seemed overwhelming and intimidating to me. They made it easy and they got me through what seemed overwhelming to how am I going to retire someday? And they made it easy. They've already proved their capability there. Mm -hmm. And so why not estate planning too? Yeah, totally. All right, let's come back to the workflow because I'm going to come back to how you're not practicing law. Tell me about what it looks yeah. like to work through this. Yeah, so Encore has created the ability for the, the questionnaire process to be walked through with the client or without the client. We have, we've wanted this to be flexible. The advisor can choose a different experience options they want to deliver. We find our experience tells us when the advisor facilitates the conversation that the success rate just goes through the roof. And so when versus you can send a link to the client and say, here you go, client, the success rate is a lot lower. And so we've built that experience that the advisor can actually have their clients um, integrated into our system that now they can launch that experience of just going through the questionnaire. And the simplest, our goal is again, simplicity is better than complexity. We don't add questions or try to aggregate data that we don't necessarily need to just get this document in place. But it's enabled where the process, and especially around is in the context of unauthorized practice of law, are a few important things. One is the disqualifying if somebody's not a fit, if they're going to need legal advice, if they're going to do something like disinherit a child. We believe they should go talk to an attorney about that. That plan has a higher probability of being contested and you need legal advice on how to navigate those sorts of things. That's an example of one of our disqualifiers. And then it's important also the disclosures that exist that the advisor has the client sign off. They understand I'm not an attorney. I'm not going to give you legal advice. I'm facilitating 
Encore's experience of creating documents for you, client. And I'm just going to make it easy for you to get through this process in facilitating it. But that clarity is there. The clients have documented that. And the third kind of D that we talk about is documentation of the client's decisions. And even if an advisor in this case is facilitating the software, questionnaire, clients answering the questions, the advisor along the way is going to grab resources. If the client has a question, they're going to surface those resources for the client to help uh, get the education they need. And, and, and But at the end of that process is we send links out with the summary of all the client's decisions to their email address that they can validate. And they can say, yep, this is everything I want. We actually even add an additional page to the document that is a summary of all the decisions that enables the client to sign off of, this is everything I want for my plan. And it's just good due diligence on the ability for it be, to be well-documented. This is how the client wanted their estate plan to look. They own these decisions. Okay. All right, so let's talk about the not crossing the legal line. Tell me how, what's being done, what's on site, and where the line is not being crossed and how, you prevent, present, how you're preventing that from happening. Yeah, and obviously, so our documents, we've partnered with attorneys in all 50 states that are creating the template documents. In essence, we're really no different than what an estate planning attorney would do, especially for a mass affluent client, someone who doesn't have a lot of complexity that just needs education to be able to ha have to make the decisions they need to make. And so our system is then populated by the those template state-specific documents that are populated from our questionnaire. So one of the important pieces here is as the advisor is facilitating that it's just education. What does the client need to know without the advisor's opinion, legal opinion, through that questionnaire process? One of the important pieces, though, from a quality control and how we've approached this differently is the tech's great for the efficiency of gathering up the client's decisions, populating a template attorney-created document for that state. But where it really matters is human review. The quality control, the garbage that can go in that just gets spit out in a document. And so we've approached this very intentionally that before we return the documents, we are going to have human estate planners review for quality control. Mm. It is amazing what we see that in most in with any other provider would have just been spit out as a document. The things that we see come through. Somebody mm. we've seen advisors named as a trustee. Any other software that's just going to spit yeah. out the name of a trustee or a successor trustee, we can catch those things. We see uh, somebody they name somebody young, a twenty-two year old as their mm -hmm. trustee, their oldest child, but then they put a distribution schedule out to age thirty-five something happens between now and the age of 35, that person is now in charge of their own as a trustee own estate. And so we would we catch those sorts of issues that can be created in the questionnaire process to make sure the quality control, the advisor is able to communicate back with the client. And so really important part of our process that, yeah, it takes a few extra days for the documents to get back to the client, but the quality control is there as well. Excellent. So you're doing that. So end of the day, the actual human intervention, the 11th hours is really interesting to me. There's your, the things that a software wouldn't necessarily catch, right? Unless you catch that kind of mm -hmm. deal. Like you're not necessarily going to input the date of birth for every beneficiary that we're, when you're dealing with, because you might not know, I want to name my sister-in-law or like whatever. I don't want to name my, my, one of my close friends. I don't know his birthday, right? That's a very good point. And as for the advisor being named to do things, yeah, there's all kinds of regs around that, aren't there? You might be, at least I know that you're, anyone who wants to commit fraud is not going to use your platform. So that's pretty much it. <laughs> exactly. It wouldn't be possible. No, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be, be possible. So it's a good catch. Yeah. Um, and it's really, really, it's interesting because it's, these are things that advisors, and again, on this overall kind of compliance component is advisors are already talking about beneficiary designations. They should be, <laughs> the good ones are, and helping clients make decisions here. They're talking about gifting strategies. They're helping clients in these ways. And this is just the next obvious step to say where we can educate the mass affluent on the things they need. It's a great experience for the client. Totally. Absolutely. All right, that's what you've done to date. Talk to me about the level of involvement that the advisor has from their side. What do they see me that the client isn't or how much of this has to be guided versus the client on their own? What's it look like? Yeah, it's interesting. We have advisors, and this is what I learned, use wealth tech tools, 
so many different ways. And so the variance of experience is, is there that some advisors have a client take the first pass on the questionnaire. And then they set the meeting after that and say, okay, we're going to gather up. We'll make sure we get these last things taken care of together. So that's an opportunity that they have if they want the client to take the first pass and then they come together and sit back down and schedule that. And so there's so many different variances of what they can do with how they deliver, take the client through the process. But a lot of it is also setting up uh, and we provide in our knowledge base, we have hundreds of resources now that are both client educational, advisor educational, uh, we training on unauthorized practice of law, but all these things that equip the advisor to step into this gap. Because a lot of this too is advisors feeling comfortable about these conversations. And, and for those who haven't done a lot on state planning, being able to be comfortable through those experiences. The goal really, is, and you said nagging, There's that is a big part of the advisor's life. They recognize the client, or if they just give something to the client to do, they're not going to do it. And so it's the walking through, hand-holding, following up with the dotting the I's and crossing the T's with beneficiary designations, the funding part. Deeds is a huge um, important thing to discuss here that is a funding capacity that gets missed on a lot of trust-based estate plans that we actually provide the service of actually uh, recording the deeds and making sure the real estate is funded. And the advisor is there to make sure not only documents got created, for the by the client, but that now we've actually funded this thing, and we're going to avoid probate in these states where it's a a, a real hassle for the family members. Well, all right, so that's where you are today. Talk to me about where you see it going. Like where what do you see developing? What do you have in the works that you can share with us? Yeah, we've we've launched this last year, and there's a lot more work for us to do here. Is the ability to have a visual summary on the existing estate plan. And so really solving for that gap of the millions of estate plans that are out there that haven't been reviewed. I laugh with advisors all the time that we have too many advisors today that will ask the client, hey, do you have an estate plan? Yes, you do. Okay, great. Let's check the box. Moving on. I don't need to ask again. If I told an advisor that in 2015, I got a financial plan done, I'm good. I don't need one. Advisors laugh. It's what, what do you mean? No, I'm good. I got, a, I got my financial plan done yeah. like eight years ago. But we do that with estate planning. And so we say, oh, cool, you got one. Great. We want to make this as turnkey and as easy as possible for the advisor to say, great, give me that document. I'm, our team's going to review it for you. And we're going to have a conversation about it and make sure the decisions you made back then are still relevant to your reality today, just like I do with your financial plan. And we're going to review this on a regular basis. And so we have the ability where we've made this, they upload those documents into our software. For $150, we provide the a visual summary of here's all the decisions made in a one-page overview that delivers 90% of what somebody would want to know in a one-page summary on the advisor's letterhead that then now facilitates a great conversation with the client, to, or the advisor and the client to review those decisions. And and if, if they're happy with their plan as it is, awesome. That becomes a cover page on that document with the advisor's letterhead that is easy to understand. That's an amazing document to send off to every family member that's named in this document. They should oh. understand their role as your healthcare agent. Oh, um, it's the great family conversation that says, hey, your children should have some understanding of your estate plan. You might not want to send them this 70-page document, but here's a one-page overview that can facilitate the family conversation. And often what happens is in that conversation, the client realizes, oh, geesh, we forgot we named Judy as our successor trustee. <laughs> That's not a relationship we have anymore. We have a problem. And yeah. great. Visor's value is uncovering, delivers value by uncovering problems clients didn't realize they have. And I love the entire, a, I left that person I haven't spoke to in five years, a bunch of money. I should probably fix that problem. Yeah, totally. Or an ex-wife is in there somewhere. <laughs> Whatever. Oh, that happens. Those yeah. relationships change, wealth changes, health changes, all those things that existing documents need to be considered. And then we make that process to say, okay, let's grab all the information out of your existing old plan. Let's restate it. And let's, re and let's have our questionnaire filled out with that information that then you can go in with the client. They can make the changes they want to make, hit submit. And our goal is to ultimately enable an old document to become a new document for many common changes with less than 10 minutes of effort 
that can be accomplished. And we think that's game changing, again, to fixing a broken experience on updating my old document that's incredibly broken that the advisor should get be the one to solve that experience. Excellent. So before we wrap up, there's three questions I'd like to ask everyone then on a positive note. The first one I have yeah. for you is what's the get one wish for something to change in your company or the industry as a whole? What would it be? You know what? It is access to advice. And I think we're going this way and we see the advisors that are attracted to estate planning as an offering that we need more advisors with flexible models that of how they get paid. AUM works great. And we're seeing this obviously as we develop more subscription-based services and seeing firms that are prioritizing and leading with that. But there's a lot of people and I came from, I didn't come from wealth. And so in, in my family background, but I came from a family that could have hugely benefited from having an advisor guide them on budgeting and, and how to think about money and in those ways. And I'm a huge fan if we could get this industry to have to deliver firms to deliver for different client levels, a different option of how they pay other than AUM only. And so I think we're headed the right direction in that. I think technology, AI, a lot of these benefits are enabling advisors to work with more clients. Uh And if we could just move down market and get more access for more regular folks that need a great advisor, it's super important. Yeah, the it's happening. I think the US market is clearly the leader in that in particular. I think the real thing that people don't talk enough about and what was actually worked out quite well because of all the competition in different vendors in the US is so much of it around the world has to do with the cost centers, not the revenue centers, but the cost centers, because those are the ones that make it prohibitive to push down to lower levels. And the likes of what XY has done in terms of being able to give you a turnkey solution at a very low affordable price, just opens the market up for what is possible. So I think uh, I'm, I'm with you. I'd like to see more advice get down there. But I think more often than not, as an industry, we need to stop Start looking more, stop talking about fees as much and how we charge for fees and realize Mm -hmm. that they're a function of profitability. And we need to look more at what can we do to basically service that market in an affordable way with an affordable with affordable solutions that are highly scalable and then work backwards to what the clearing price is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear you. Yeah. Second question I have for you is what's been the biggest challenge in the company where it is today? Yeah, I think in some ways, though, we're not alone in recognizing that estate planning as an offering is a huge opportunity for advisors. We're sometimes early in that overall. There's still advisors who I think get the concept and the idea of, okay, this is cool but obviously are hesitant to step into things that they don't have all the answers for. And the one of our challenges is coaching advisors into getting them comfortable with this role with and leveraging a support team. We have estate planners available to advisors, but learning to be okay with having a conversation, facilitating this for a client and not having to be the source of all the answers and leveraging resources, leveraging an estate planning team that we have as a support component. And so we're still early on getting advisors to really adopt this. I think a lot more today say, I want to have that as an offering. I want to deliver that as a solution. But getting the through the effort of building out a new offering is slower for a lot of advisors to to take on. And so obviously, I think right today, it's a huge opportunity for advisors because of that, the low adoption of estate planning at this moment in time uh, uh, as an offering. It's a huge differentiator. It's driving referrals, driving revenue, driving retention. And as more advisors catch on to that, they're going to do the work to establish this. But estate planning five to eight years from now is going to be table stakes as a financial planner that if you don't have it, you're going to lose clients. Why would clients and prospects work with you? Yeah, no, I agree. But I will also say that, frankly, it already is core. Just yeah, the way to the fact that it is. It's, it's yeah, exactly. part of the entire cycle. So just, and I always had a distaste for just telling people to go talk to a professional. Mm-hmm. That's not service. That's just abdication of service. You should really be yeah. focused on being in that room and facilitating that conversation as much as possible. I know there's a scale. You're, it's, it's still a core piece of it, regardless of that. Okay. Yep. All right. And then the uh, last question I have for you is what excites you the most about what it is you're working on and keeps you getting out of bed in the morning to fight the good fight? 
Yeah, it really is at my core. I told you my story of my Aunt Jan. <laughs> There's too, too many people out there that don't have an estate plan, that it isn't complicated, that with 30 minutes with an advisor, this could be solved for. And so that's one that is an important one, but it's also moving this industry in, in the right direction. That is a win. Anything that's a win for the consumer, that's a win for the investor that now advisors are going to step into, it, It's that's exciting to me. This is a win for the entire industry um, in moving, making estate planning accessible to advisors to have a solution. We have conversations daily with advisors who have been, I've been looking for a solution like this for years. And so when we have those, that those are ready for it, it's exciting. That gets me up, that, that drives our team internally. And I get to do it with a lot of great people. The We are an incredible opportunity. We're the talent right now that's available. It's so exciting. And we have an incredible team that just loves coming through for advisors. And so every day waking up and going to battle with an amazing group of people definitely is what gets me out of bed. Fantastic. Matt, thank you so much for your time. Yeah. Um, thank you so much, Jason. This was an awesome conversation. Appreciate all you do around, well, FinTech and getting the word out for companies like ours. So thank you. My pleasure. So that was my conversation with Matt Morris of Encore Estates. And of course, if you basically are an advisor in the U.S. looking for a tool like this, by all means, take a look. And with that, as always, if you enjoyed this podcast, please leave a review on Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, Spotify, wherever you your podcast. And until next time, take care. This podcast was brought to you by Woodgate Financial, an award-winning financial planning firm catering to high net worth individuals and their families. To learn more, go to woodgate.com. You can subscribe to this podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, and Google Play, or find more episodes at jasonperera.ca.